Hey gang, now that one tank is emptied and the other is refilled, let's continue with part two. Uh, I, yeah, we had another guest who uh, does does some other contributions to Yerg's radio, who has a show called Outrage Overload, where his whole thing is studying all the anger in media. My point on those people that you just mentioned, the people who are left, was that they're probably not very educated and they're the people that we need to be reaching out to and helping. His counter was that the people that are left are actually the so-called educated ones who, as my dad would say, are so smart they're stupid. They have really convinced themselves, partially because of their education, that Trump is the man. And I think they're just using him. The Republican Party? You know, what? the tax breaks that he allowed during his term. I mean, they're just using him to do uh, that, to forward their own. Yeah, but That's think, the way I see it. The wealthy segment of that, but a lot of those people are my neighbors down here in rural Florida. And I promise you, they are not wealthy. You know, I see $40,000 boats sitting on a ski lift, or, or excuse me, on a boat lift that haven't left that boat lift in the two years I've lived here because they can't afford to do it. And you know yet Trump had a, such such a better had such a better economy. Then tell me why when I was making six figures in the secret service I was living paycheck to paycheck. I'm living five I'm I'm living off five figures now in retirement, bought two jet skis and I'm putting a son through college and I'm saving money. Even after my mortgage went up fifteen hundred dollars a month because of Ron DeSantis's failure, the insurance part. Yeah. Wow. And the mortgage stuff too. And again, there's there's factors. I'm in the I'm of the opinion, um, and I play the game with people. But we can talk about Trump's economy or Biden's economy, but I don't think presidents control economies. So I think not part totally. Of that, no. So part of that's just a waste of time, a waste of breath. But if you do want to play, you know, um, president's economies and you start a friend of mine who's very learned, a former, he just retired as a, an eye doctor. And he's he's not he, I don't think he would vote for Trump at this point, but I, I think I'm pretty sure he did the first two times. And I um, but I think he's finally off that train. But he wants there to be an excuse that justifies his choices, his previous choices. Yes. You know, so. He, he gets talking, well, you know, since, uh, what do they say, 2020, since 2020, the deficit has gone from uh, 26 to 34. And I said, no, that's not true. Well, what do you mean? I said, well, Trump's budget, if you're going to play presidents do that, okay, Trump's budget uh, ends in, 20, in October of 2021. That's still, all that money is still that pandemic. Well, that's just because of the pandemic. You're damn right it is. Still because of the pandemic. And some of the gains that Trump, or that you, they're attributing to Biden are because of the pandemic. But you can't say in one person's case, the pandemic is the main factor. And in the other person's case, say, oh, no, the pandemic <laughs> isn't the main reason. You know, what, what's, uh, what was the last thing? 14 million, 15 million jobs since Biden was elected. You know, and 10 million were definitely ones that were lost in the pandemic. True. But there's still another 4 million, 4 million. And nobody expected that. So what I do believe is presidents can't fix or change or manipulate economies, but they can screw them up. And I think that policies definitely screw up economies. So what we know is, on my line, I'm not a big Biden fan. But he hasn't screwed up the economy. The economy's <laughs> doing pretty well. Right. You know what I mean? So um, whatever influence or efficacy he can have, somebody's advising him or fairly well because every other industrialized nation has been hit harder by the pandemic than we have. Every Correct. single one. And none of them called it a hoax. Correct. Well, that's the other thing. Is I, I don't know what the final count was, but it was – we have, what was it, 5% of the population in the world and 20% of the COVID deaths. I don't know if that was at some point in the process, but but it was, yeah, it was something. I don't know if that's how it ended up, 
But at some point in the course of the, yeah, it was 5% of the population, but we had 20% of the deaths. It, it was ridiculous. Now, Ross, you might want to consider adding Phil to up the middle. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> Biden was not my first choice either. But I don't do like what you, and I'm not saying what you did is wrong. I'm just saying my reason. I don't vote the way you did in 2016 because as a political scientist by education, I feel it's a very wasted vote. The, the chances of Gary Johnson really winning aren't there. No. The chances of you making a statement by voting for Gary Johnson, 100%. Well, no, but here's the justification. I had no intention of him winning, or I had no thoughts that he would win. At that particular point, the vote or the, the electorate was so divided, I thought we can, might have an independent who gets the 6% or the 7% or whatever it was and get him on the ballot, get him on the stage, get him on the debate. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I thought yeah. was a possibility. So... I'm voting for Gary Johnson. I still believe we should have a third party. You know, right. the, 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 there should be a and – what, and what's going to end up happening is if we ever get to that, okay, um, was it RFK is running independent right now? Um, yeah. Let's, let's just play a, a hypothetical game. I would vote for Liz Cheney in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Um, in here. Uh, uh, again, and she is a little bit further right conservatively than I am. Um, but I would vote for her because I think her decisions would be her her worst decisions would be destroyed by the Congress and the best ones would help the country. So I'm OK with that. And she has integrity in my head. But absolutely. Let's, let's just suppose that there's a third choice. OK, I would vote for that third choice. And then she has to caucus with a Republican Party. She has to go rebuild the Republican Party to caucus. Or, or to get them to, right? Or, sh or she's worthless because right. she's she's not going to get 100 percent support from the Democrats. They don't want a Democrat. I mean, a, a Republican president. <laughs> she's been a Republican. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so the Democrats have to reject her officially. Mm -hmm. Republicans have to embrace her officially, and that's the invitation to fix the party. Mm -hmm. So I would, you know, I would vote for her, not necessarily thinking she's going to be the best president, right? I right. think it's for the good of the country, yeah. and I would vote for right. her because I think it's for the good of the country. Yeah, yeah. So and that's really the step that I've been saying, to, uh, to a degree, the step that I've been saying the Republican Party has to take: get rid of Donald Trump. He was a. That means DeSantis has to go too. That means Matt. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I I do not on up the middle of my political podcast and, and also on my uh, daily radio show. I do not tell people who to vote for, but I will tell them who not to vote for. And those two people are Trump and DeSantis because they are flat out the actual definition of fascists. Yep. They have no concern of, of democracy whatsoever. I'm going to ask you a question. You can tell me what you think because I have this is one of the things that baffles me. OK, explain to me the fury that the MAGA people direct individuals, direct at Biden. I find Biden to be benign mostly. Like what in the world gets them into a froth? Because I don't get it. Two things. Projection, because all these bad things they're saying about Biden are actually true about Trump. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is the best lesson I learned when I was down in umpire school. It wasn't about calling fair, foul, safe out, ball strike. It was a little learning is a dangerous thing. You learn a little bit and you think you know a lot. Right. And these people learn a little bit about what Trump says and they take it as gospel. And having no, no. The Dunning Kruger effect. Yeah, exactly. They, uh, it, it's a defense mechanism too, I think. Because the other thing that David Beckmeyer pointed out to us is that a lot of this, especially in the lower class economically of the Trump supporters, there's a level of pride because he, for whatever reason, and this is the really confusing part, but they see him as representing them. Howard Stern said it best. 
He does not like you. Period. I don't know Trump, but I know his family. I saw them a couple times a week for two years straight when I was the airport agent at Reagan Airport. There is no more entitled family that I've ever met. I mean, Silver Spoon is not good enough for them. Hence why everything they do is in gold. <laughs> and it's just, I don't get it. Why, you know, we sit here in our jeans, we sit here in our jeans and our, our, and our camouflage baseball hats, you know, talking about the Eagles. They think Eagles are a bird, not a football team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I got you. I, I am I am baffled. I'm trying to think how I am baffled by this bit of logic that, that that's escapes them. So in twenty sixteen, let's just suppose that there was terrible uh manipulation by the media in twenty twenty, excuse me. Terrible manipulation by the media and Biden didn't really win by eight million votes. You know, it was lower than that and this was done and that was done. All of the logical statistical things say Biden won and Biden won in terms of big, you know, overall votes, not electoral college. But he won by millions of votes. You know, we, we don't know how many millions, but millions. Since 2020, do you know of any people who were on the Trump train who have gotten off of it? Many. Do you know of anybody yeah. who wasn't on the Trump train who's getting back on yeah. zero. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, this, I've been saying that Ask Jane, um, the media, and you mentioned that before about manipulation, but also I think you alluded to um, them maintaining their relevance. That is a hundred percent what they're doing with these supposed polls that have Trump just a little bit ahead. That is bullshit. As a fraud investigator, we had a saying, follow the money. That's how you find Mr. Big. In the case of a, a campaign, follow the money. Now, don't follow the overall contributions because the political action committees, the super PACs, the corporations, they'll throw that out of whack in with one donation. But follow the money that, were, that was donated by Phil Repco and by Jane Stahl. And Ross Yerger. Joe Biden is leading Trump for the entire year of 2023, two to one. And he didn't even campaign yet. Yeah. That's why finding that stat is actually very tough to do because they don't want you to know it. Yeah, he can't. He can't win. Like, if, if that's who they know, and I think that the Republican Party knows that, but they don't know how to get out of it. They don't know too many of them have already uh, like the Lindsey Graham's of the world. They've already gone back and forth, back and forth so many times that if they abandon Trump now, it's their political power that's gone. It's, it, you know, it's, they're just, it's, they're destroying themselves if they jettison. But if the party were to. Lynn Cheney, Adam Kinzinger and Mitt Romney. Yep. Yeah, I would vote for uh, I could, Romney's old, too old too, but I would vote for him. There's no, there's no chance uh, that that despite his age, if you listen to him talk, and I think he's what seventy six. Yes. If you Six. listen to him talk, he sounds like a sixty year old. Like he does not come off <laughs> as an old guy. No. Like Biden does. Biden comes off sometimes as an old tired guy. Um, I think Trump comes off as a deranged, senile guy. I, I think there's more mental decay going on in Trump than I than in Biden. But Biden is like when you saw him when he was, at, you know, at his peak in say 1985, he was a quick talker. He stuttered and all of that, made mistakes, but he was pretty quick. He was pretty forceful. Sometimes more forceful than he should have been. So he has slowed down dramatically. You know, and struggle oh, yeah. sometimes getting coherence into it, but um, not like the other guy. The other guy is 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 off his rocker. I mean, yeah, 
nobody wants to draw great attention to that, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I got to be honest. I thought this was going to be a, a, a hockey game between you and me because uh, – uh, Jane said that you weren't a Hillary fan. So I, I, I went to that. I went there. I made that conclusion. Like, Oh Christ, he's a Trump supporter. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I was again, no, the, I, the Facebook, one of the places where I wrote prose, I wrote a pretty good deal of Facebook. They used to let you do notes. And I wrote notes on Facebook, um, from whenever it, I joined it, which probably was, middle you know early 2000s to 2006 7 something like that but i was i com i complained a lot about obama and i never once said obama's a bad guy i never once said obama has no integrity or no honor or whatever i didn't right. like the biggest gripe with obama was he here's a guy he's the black guy he, he breaks the glass ceiling he has a bully pulpit that's like phenomenal. And yet all those little yap dogs are, you know, he's from Kenya. He's, you know, they were making no progress. But then he fell into the trap of at least five, six, seven times in his eight years turning um, events, Henry Gates, whatever, into racial moments. Uh, Michael, what was his name? The guy in Ferguson. Mm -hmm. uh, if Trayvon Martin could be my son and, like I'm just sitting there, you know, you're, he put a divide, he did a polarizing thing. And maybe at that point he was only polarizing 30% of the populace, but it was 30% of the populace who and otherwise yet, would have just shut up. And yet I, <laughs> what I recall from his presidency is that the black and brown communities were annoyed that he didn't make more of yep. that. Oh yeah. So me, it was a lose, lose situation for the no, guy. No. I mean, he couldn't show the passion he may have felt because he'd become an angry black man. Yep. You know, and that was a dangerous thing to do. No, I, I agree. I think <clears throat> as slick as he was, he could have gotten, he could have pacified or made progress with the with the minority, black, Hispanic, whatever, without ever going over the top and pointing fingers. He called the police that arrested Henry Gates stupid you know what mm -hmm. i mean what yeah oh i remember he could have made yeah. he could have okay. made his point and again placated them or whatever without turning it into an us against them yeah and and you know so but again on a personal note scandal free good yeah. human being didn't always like his politics but um like it might again i'm just I want to do the country thing. So Obamacare, <laughs> I griped and griped and griped about Obamacare, but not not for the reason that a Republican should. Okay, <laughs> I said, if you're going to do that, and the government can, if you're going to do that, you're going to make sure that it's hardcore, that you're going to have an oversight. It's going to be open to everybody. You're going to figure out a way to pay for it. You know what I mean? You can't say... Uh, was it Nancy Pelosi's thing? We have to uh, pass it before we can figure it out. No, before we read it, are we going yeah. to find yeah, out yeah, what's yeah. in it? Yeah. No. <laughs> he's the. He's the. He would have been to me. He had that two-year period. He had. He had the perfect opportunity to say, um, "That's the first thing I'm going to do." Yeah. He knew that people didn't like Hillary. Don't mm -hmm. let Hillary in charge of that. Do you uh -huh. know what I mean? Uh, or okay. anything to do with that. Because she was the one, wasn't she the one that yes. Bill Clinton asked yes. to, to do yes. it first? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's kind of the, the tragic part of that is that everybody calls it Obamacare when she was literally left off Capitol Hill during Bill's administration. And that was one of the things when you had commented about, you know, you didn't think she was a dummy. I remember standing out in somewhere in like uh, out near CIA, out in like McLean, Virginia at a fundraiser at this guy's house. And I'm standing in his flower bed behind a tree trying to hide when he walks over to me to start talking. I'm like, oh, shit, he's going to bitch at me for being in his flowers. And he just starts <laughs> going, wow, it'd be nice to have her back. I'm like, what do you mean have her back? And he goes, oh, she was the brains behind Bill's administration. And that was not the first time I heard that. And it wasn't the last. Yeah, well, again, I also heard... I was not. A, I said I was not a fan of the the integrity piece of Clinton. Right. You know? um, right. But for just political expediency, he's a heck of a politician. 
As soon as yeah. he didn't have a Congress, he did stuff that was in the middle so he could get the Republicans to vote for him. You know, I mean, he, he was slick. Right. He, right. You know. But anyway, so uh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> I'm sorry I disappointed you. Ah, uh, no. No, it's actually, uh, I am actually, the only reason it's a disappointment is because I'm actually looking for Trump supporters for the exact question that you asked. Right. At this point in the game, <laughs> I have a guy, and this is the, one of the guys I parry with on on uh, on the Facebook is a guy named Mike Hart. Uh, he is a uh, I'm trying to think when he graduated. I graduated from Ursinus in '83. I think he's in '85, six or seven. He was younger than me, and he was in school when I was there, but I don't remember what class he's in. And he is hardcore. Okay, he has the he trots out the um, I would call it equivocation or the rationalization of everything Trump. He has a Trump answer, so he 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 will occasionally put something up there and says, "Look at this accomplishment from Trump," and it's from the Trump White House website. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, so if you go look at that, it's not that nothing good ever happened during the Trump um, regime. It's that if anything good happened, it was an accident and something that he really wasn't doing purposefully um, because tr presidents don't control everything. Um, and, you know, he, he postured well. He said things people wanted to hear, but yeah, that's not the same thing as accomplishment. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, exactly. He took credit for a lot of things that were had nothing to do with him. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, they, they, I, I point, I sent out the thing. He put up something about the uh, the border, you know, issue, which again, mm -hmm. I have not defended any of the current policies toward the border. It's a mess and it's a wreck and it's been for forty years. Mm -hmm. And Biden made it worse, so uh, he doesn't get any, you know, pass from me. But um, the th talking point that Trump somehow slowed down or stopped illegal immigration is just flat out false. Correct. He stopped legal immigration. Legal immigration was squashed, but illegal immigration, eh, he had a little of an effect because people could stay in Mexico. <laughs> but that's about it. Well, the other thing about that, I love hearing about how, and, and I, I agree, you know, there needs to be some serious changes, but of all the illegal aliens that enter the country, only a small percentage walk across a border. Most of them fly in. So the, the problem isn't with building a wall that you want to put your name on. The problem is doing the things legally that your own advisors, Donald, told you were illegal, such as the Muslim ban. Now, here's a caveat for that. So I agree, I agree with you. So here's the – and I'll tell you why I give agree with you. Um, but there's a, a, a caveat to that. The, the current crisis with caravans of people crossing the border and they all need to be processed, and some of them, you know, it's catch and release and all of that kind of stuff – that is a real problem. That's a legitimate mess. Um, and it has been since you and I were born. Correct. But that's not where the brunt of the problem is coming. I um, There's a program in this country, actually Secret Service, you might, have, you, know, you might have had occasion to run into it, but the whole visa program for schools is called CVIS. So I had this young lady who came in, and I mean young lady, and she sat down with me and I just said, look, I got a lot of questions about you because, you know, you're dealing with this visa situation, these kids. I had kids at the school who came to from Mexico, really just one family. But there was a cycle every couple of years. There'd be a couple of students from Mexico. They'd come up. They wanted the eighth grade Catholic education. And then they'd go back to Mexico or some of them stayed. OK, to be truthful. But they weren't here trying to be citizens at that point. They were just here. And I asked her, I said, explain to me why it is that this is such a mess. And she said exactly what you just said. There are 483,000 gazillion different types of visa. There um, is uh, bureauc bureaucracy or management thereof is impossible. And people come in, like I say it's a college student, they come in or even a work visa. They hit the end of their days and then they disappear. And right. they're here. And, you know, another trap that I think Obama, and I get why he did it, but another that Obama, the, the dream, you know, act, whatever, 
it was a mistake on paper. I don't know if it was the wrong decision, but it was a mistake the way it went to, to another time where, you know, Reagan gave amnesty and it backfired. And now Obama gave amnesty and it backfired. Like you, you can't, you got to come up with a better answer than that. You know, um, don't know exactly. I said what it was. I don't want to, I don't think those people needed to be deported. You know what I mean? But there had to be something more efficient than saying, Oh no, we're going to call it a do over. Um, that doesn't sit well, you know? Well, my biggest, I, I love how they, the Republicans love to keep saying, and I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, I voted for Bush twice. So there's a conservative side to me as well. But they keep saying about the mess at the border, the crisis at the border, the open borders. We just caught 21 terrorists trying to cross the border. That doesn't sound very open to me if you got them. Correct. And if shit's so bad in this country, why are there 80,000 people marching in to get here? No. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I'm with you. So so this is my – tell me what you think about this. So this is my take on why the economy, the U.S. economy is doing – better than anybody expects. And I, uh, I got pushback, but especially from Trump people. But I said, I put it into very, very simple terms. China had the worst of the pandemic. They handled it the worst because they're a, um, a dictatorship, and whether they say they are or not. And they handcuffed their own country. And the only reason or the main reason that we're – managing way, way better than the other industrialized countries is because China is suffering. I think there's a direct correlation to if China can't get get goods and manufacturing and can't get things out or in place, who's doing it? Mm -hmm. That's why Biden's the, you know, we're going to do chips or, you know. uh, Yeah, right, right, right. Why? Because you can compete with China because they can't do it. That's where right. that's the only place they were being made. You know, I just think, and I don't know this, okay, because I'm not an economics guy, but to me it makes sense when uh, you, you were alive. I don't know if you would remember or uh, know about it. Political science, you might. When Japan took over our economy in the 70s and it coincided with the Jimmy Carter thing and the, all of the – Japan knew everything. Everybody was stealing whatever idea they could from Japan. And Japan screwed up and their entire demographic got way too old and they didn't have enough young people, you know, to support the old people. And their economy went stagnant for 20 years. And guess who jumped in? The United States all of a sudden (laughs) doing okay, you know, because the ones who were the primary competition. So that's why I'm saying maybe that's too far of a jump. But the last time it happened when I was a kid, our economy improved Really, a big part of it was because Japan's was struggling. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, we, we get, economically, we get number one because somebody else isn't, not because we earned it. Well, we're resilient. We, we, we definitely, even, even today, under the worst of circumstances, like uh, I was, the guy that I was talking about, Mike Hart, <clears throat> was um, touting all of the places that are announcing huge layoffs, you know, Amazon and the tech companies and whatever. But there's go look it up, like do a real reasonable search and say, okay, how bad is the layoff situation? And those big companies that are following McKinsey and doing what they tell them to do, you know, but that's not what's going on across the country. Those those job numbers are really the layoffs are really only coming from that sector. The other sectors are doing okay. Some of them are doing great. Small percentage as well. Right. So, you know, it's it's not that it isn't happening. It's that it's not the best indicator, which I think is what happens all the time. You know, my wife gets off, off on the high horse. She's um, hit that point where she's afraid. She's not as uh, in charge of herself as, you know, as, she, as she used to be. And she's, well, the violence in Philly, you know, and I'm like, you know, there is violence in Philly. But the news people, your Twitter feed, they want you to think that that's, pervasive to the point where you better not drive into the city limits when in fact all of that's happening in the same three blocks that had happened five years ago but now there's a camera there because they want a camera there because they want me to think that it's more of an issue than it really is but again to the people that are in that mindset it's hard to convince them it's not that it isn't real 
It's just that it isn't the only reality. It's mm -hmm. not the only thing, you know. Well, my guess is you guys are on for the next two days. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's our timing? We are at about an hour and five minutes. I he can, figured. <laughs> he, can, he can cut whatever he wants. Um, so I, I do have a question for you. So you were in this uh, Secret Service from when to when? Uh, 2000 to 2021. Okay. John Thomasitis was not Secret Service. He was in CIA. CIA. John Thomasitis graduated not too many years after you. Um, okay. Went into, went into the Air Force. Um, and then I think it was CIA. Uh, but I'm not okay. positive about that. Um, all I know is when he was, say, post-college, I got a phone call from him, or I ran into him, I forget which, and I just made a comment about when you going back, and he he did the genuine, I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so, um, um, but but anyway, the, uh, the number of people who have been in the bureaucracy of Washington and the efforts by not just MAGA, but the Democratic thing too, to make government the enemy. Um, if you if you're part of the your bureaucracy, you're part of the swamp, and and yet yeah. the biggest employer in our country is still the military. You know, uh, but they all support the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just I said a lot. A lot of the stuff is just we we Jane's right. We could go on all because that's another thing that makes me crazy is that you're talking about a guy who is married for the third time, cheated on every wife he's had, got the third one pregnant while still married to the second one. And that's your guy for family values. <laughs> You're talking about a guy who refers to uh, dead World War I soldiers as suckers and losers. And that's the guy you think supports the military. Yeah. You're talking about a guy who's been in bankruptcy seven times and convicted of fraud three and that's the guy you want running the economy yeah tell me again how this is a good decision yeah again i, I just the only cop and the reason i said well, on facebook well, i'm i may seem like uh, i'm playing hardball and i'm playing i'm really truly playing is he can't win. like in the yeah. back of my mind there's just, there's no chance oh, he can't win. i can uh, only hope you're right yeah with some of the stupid shit he's saying, I really don't think he wants to. Yeah, I don't know. You think he just wants money for his, his cases? <laughs> it, 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 most of his funding goes to his legal fees. It doesn't go to his campaign. Yeah, he's a net negative for the year for campaign funds by, by millions. Mm -hmm. Another reason he can't win. Not happening. Anyway, Robert, nice talking to you. All right, man, I got to get one. Yeah, same here. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to make sure you have enough material. <laughs> uh, we got it. We got it. And uh, I'll be in touch. Uh, have you back on. I have three or four more bits in my back pocket. Just let me know. Nice. Awesome. All right. I really do got to run. Yep. Same here. Okay. Yes. So thank, thank you. Thank you. See you, buddy. Jane, thank you again. Uh, I will be back to say goodbye to you. I'm going to let Phil out the door. Go ahead. I'll see you in a minute.